Welcome. Thank you all for joining me on today's episode of the Metabolic Classroom, powered, if you will, by Insulin IQ. As we get started, let me just lay out the groundwork. So the focus for the lesson today is the anti-diabetic drugs. Now you can tell from the name, um, anti-diabetic means that it's fighting the disease diabetes. Uh, but that term itself can be a little confusing. Um, but I also want to take a little time to describe the problem with most anti-diabetic drugs. And that is particularly the paradigm with which these drugs are in a way created. Um, these drugs are based on the idea of glucose being the villain. Now, I wanted to be able to I wanted to be able to have you listen to this discussion and participate in this classroom as a student uh, and have in mind both type one and type two diabetes uh, because they are kind of similar, but they're also kind of different. But by keeping them both in mind, it, I actually think it becomes helpful for you to then see what I consider to be the problem. And again, namely the glucose centric paradigm. So let's just start with a, a brief overview of type one and type two diabetes. Now, if I were to ask you to describe type one diabetes in the fewest possible words, you would say probably something like it is a disease of no insulin. Mm -hmm. And that would be absolutely right. Now there's a little more nuance to it. And indeed there's a little more background, namely the autoimmune aspect and the destruction of the beta cells that produce insulin. But regardless, the focus would be on um, the reduction of insulin to the point of negligible to zero and, and, and the, all the, the metabolic complications that come from that because insulin just has such a chokehold on all things metabolic. Now with type two diabetes, how would you describe it? You can't say it's a disease of no insulin because it isn't. It is never a disease of no insulin. Type 2 diabetes is never a disease of no insulin. Unfortunately, some of the language surrounding type 2 diabetes makes us think it's a disease of no insulin because you'll hear terms like insulin becomes insufficient. Well, what does that mean? That's a relative term. Insufficient for what? Well, it means in what they mean by that is it's insufficient for controlling blood sugar levels. In reality, if it's actual type two diabetes, insulin levels are higher than normal. It, it, if you look at insulin levels over the life of the type two diabetic, they have gone up and up and up and up, continued to go up. And then in some instances of type two diabetes, it may crest, it peaks and starts to come down but it never goes down to zero. That's not type two diabetes. Now there are rare instances called LADA, L-A-D-A, latent autoimmune diabetes of the adult, which is basically just a late onset type one. It may be coincident that someone with type two diabetes develops type one later in life, but that's not type two anymore. And, uh, that's a different disease that just happens to be address, uh, focusing on or targeting the pancreas. So with type two diabetes, insulin never goes to zero, even though it may come down a bit, but even if it comes down and it peaks and crests and starts to drop again, as I just described, it's still multiples higher than it was before the person ever started on this, in, on this journey towards type two diabetes. So if you're, if you're watching me, um, then, then it would go something like insulin levels are really, really low. They're climbing over the life of the person year over year over year. Mind you, all while, glu all while glucose is staying flat. And then it comes up and then it can start to turn and come down a bit. But even if it comes down, it's still much, much higher than it is when it started and higher than it would be, than higher than is ideal in someone who's metabolically healthy or who has good insulin sensitivity. 